Hello, puppet. A little green tea action this morning. Trying to get off the coffee. I got a feeling that's what's hurting my gut, but I don't know. I ain't real sure about this green tea either. It ain't got a whole lot of get up and go to it. Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. Let's see, Genesis chapter number five. This is the book of the generations of Adam. And the day that God created man in the likeness of God made he him. Male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam in the day they were created. I've heard people make the point because when you go back and see the first mention of that, it says he made them, you know. Male and female created he them. But initially he just made the man, right? But the woman was in there the whole time, in the real whatever. And when he separates them, I've heard people say that that's why the man wants to cleave to his wife to be whole again, you know. There's that that drawing power, as it were, I guess. That's cool, cool thought. But, uh, this is, because we know when he did make Eve, Adam called her a woman because she was taken from man and then he named her Eve, mother of all living. And Adam lived 130 years and begat a son in his own likeness after his image. So, you know, Adam was made in God's image. Now everybody else is gonna be in the image of Adam. And that's, you know, not, nothing weird. That's just how God made it. Remember, it's everything produces after its own kind. And Adam was made after the kind of God. Some people don't like that, but it says in his image, after his likeness, then he marred that image, didn't he, by sin. And now that's what we get on down the line. But there's still enough of that image of God in every man and woman. By the time we hit the days of Noah, when he comes off the ark, one of his first commandments is, you know, don't kill man. If you kill somebody, then you're going to be killed because man was made in the image of God. All right. He says, after his image, he called his name Seth. And the days of Adam, after he had uh, begotten Seth, were 800 years. And he begat sons and daughters. That was that, what we referred to when we was like, who was Cain's wife? Adam, and Adam lives 930 years. They could have had a lot of children then. And it says they had sons and daughters. And all the days that Adam lived were 930 years. And he died. I always, you know, probably getting tired of making this point. I got to make this point every time I see it. Because this whole generation of Adam, it's going to say they all died. Except for Enoch. But the point is they died. Because uh that's what happens when you sin. The wages of sin is death. When we get to the genealogy of Jesus in Matthew, of course they all died too, but it conveniently leaves that part out. They don't say they died and they died and they died. And that's just a good little jewel, a little nugget dug in here that you can dig out. Why? Because in Adam all are dying. Even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Amen. Seth lives 105 years and begat Enos. Seth lived after he begat Enos 807 years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Seth were 912 years, and he died. And Enos lived 90 years and begat Cainan. And Enos lived after he begat Cainan 815 years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Enos were 905 years, and he died. Cainan lived 70 years and begat Mahalalel. And Cain and lived after he begat Mahalalel 840 years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Cain were 910 years and he died. Mahalalel lived 60 and five years and begat Jared. He went to Jared, there's an easy name. And Mahalalel lived after he begat Jared 830 years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Mahalalel were 890 and five years and he died. Jared lived 160 and two years, and he begat Enoch. And Jared lived after he begat Enoch 800, 800 years, and he begat uh, sons and daughters. And all the days of Jared were 960 and two years, and he died. That's a long time, isn't it? 962. He's going for the record, but he gets beat here in a little bit. Enoch lived 60 and five years and begat Methuselah. 
And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah 300 years and begat sons and daughters. Take note of that. Enoch walked with God. There's this teaching, this idea that once Adam and Eve sinned, God, that separated man and God until Jesus came. Read through this Old Testament. God walked with all kinds of people. Right here, he walked with Adam. He walked with Enoch. We're going to see he walked with Noah, Abraham, on down the line. And people look back at this and say, man, I wish we could have had that. that. That's the carnal mind. That's the human being. We always want what somebody else has got, even when we've got it a million gazillion times better. And what I mean by that, all this stuff, we've got better promises. God walked with some of these people. God walks inside me and you. Is that not far greater? Of course it is. Amen. And, uh... All the days of Enoch were 365. Well, why? Everybody living to be 900 years old, this guy's 365. Enoch walked with God and was not, for God took him. I've heard some people say that he just this was a one-time deal where Enoch was in trouble and God took him out of harm's way and that he shouldn't see death. No, he walked with God and God took him. In Hebrews 11, you see that more information that God translated him that he should not see death. By faith, amen, at faith of Methuselah, or Enoch, rather. Anyway, and Methuselah lived 187 years and begat Lamech. And Methuselah lived after he begat Lamech 782 years, and he begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Methuselah were 969 years, and he died. There's your... There's your running champion there as far as longevity goes in the Bible. Almost a thousand years, 969. And if what's true about his name, and I wouldn't doubt it because it shows forth the ultimate long suffering of God. Of course, supposedly his name means his death shall bring. I looked it up in the concordance. It says a man of a dark or something like that. But I'm going to go through all these names when I get done here because there's a message in there. If it's, you know, true, it may just be some, something somebody concocted. I don't know, but it's pretty cool anyway, so I will share it. But if his name means his death shall bring, you're going to see that his son, uh, Lamech, when we get to him, he will have lived 777 years his whole life. Methuselah lived after he begat Lamech, like 782 years. So he actually outlived his son, and there's a reason for that because the year that Methuselah died, and I went through painstakingly, there's a reason all these numbers are in here so you can go back and chart all these things out and see things. And the year that Methuselah dies is the year that the flood comes. Amen. Now that's the long suffering of God. He allowed a man to live 969 years, you know, giving people opportunity to repent. But when that time's over with, here comes the judge. All right, let's move on. Lamech lived 182 years and begat a son, and he called his name Noah. We know that guy, don't we? Saying, the same shall comfort us concerning our work and toil of our hands because of the ground which the Lord has cursed. Lamech lived after he begat Noah 590 and five years, begat sons and daughters, and all the days of Lamech were 770 and seven years, and he died. And Noah was 500 years old and begat Noah, or begat Shem, Ham, and Japheth. He was a late bloomer, wasn't he? He waited until he was 500 before he started having kids. Shem, Ham, and Japheth. We're going to see a lot about them later on. That's the last verse. That, that little message I wanted to bring you when I brought up the name of Methuselah and what it meant. Well, somebody wouldn't, I don't know where they get this information, but they looked up the meaning of all these names, of all these first 10 generations that's mentioned. And Adam means man. We can get that. Seth means appointed because you remember when he was born, Eve said, God's appointed me another son instead of Abel whom Cain slew. Then you go on down the line. I jotted it down here, what all these mean. Supposedly, Enos means uh, mortal. And then Kayanan would mean sorrow. Who's next? Mahalalel would mean the blessed God. Uh, Jared would mean shall come down. Hope I'm getting these right. Enoch. 
would mean teaching. I looked that up. It was something similar to that. Uh, who's after Enoch? Enoch Methuselah. His death shall bring. We did that one already. Uh, Lamech means the despairing, and then Noah means comfort or rest. So what you got when you put that together? You got the message of Christ right there in the first 10 generations. Man appointed mortal sorrow, the blessed God shall come down teaching that his death shall bring the despairing comfort or rest. Again, that might be some human concoction. I don't know, but I thought it was pretty cool. And some of those names are pretty close to what they say they mean, so... I wouldn't doubt it nary bit. You get into some of this stuff, these people done stuff on the studies on like a code in the Bible where you can, it's called some fancy term. You you skip so many letters and all those letters make up different messages in the Bible called the Bible code, something like that. And all these words, especially the Hebrew, have numbers attached to them. There's a, a lot of stuff you can get into if you've got the time, but the main thing is getting right with the Lord and he shows us all through here how to do that. Amen. And even right there in the beginning, he talks about Jesus. So that's the main thing. God bless you. We'll see you next time. Ooh, I got a little remote.